Good morning, good morning, and welcome to the February breakfast meeting for the Greenwood County Democratic Party. My name is Bill Kimmler. I'm the chair of the Greenwood County Democratic Party, and I welcome you out on primary Saturday. Welcome, you all. Thank you for coming out this morning. Could I have everyone rise, please? Remove your hats if you have them, and we'll face our flag with our Pledge of Allegiance. For those of you who are new to our program, we have a tradition here where we put a little extra special emphasis on the final two words of our pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Please be seated. All right, if I could have us please pause for a few moments for a moment of silence, a chance to settle, uh, center ourselves, uh, a chance to be grateful uh, for what we do have, and a chance to reflect on those who are hurt and suffering, and maybe a prayer for peace in the Middle East. Uh, it seems like it's only ratcheting up based on recent news, so uh, please take some time uh, to, to put those thoughts out there. Thank you. Thank you very much. So hey, I want to welcome you all. Uh, I, I want to say thank you for coming out on a beautiful February morning. Spring has sprung, the birds are chirping, and it's going to be a heat wave in a month and we'll all be sweltering uh, in March. So great day to come out. Uh, I want to thank all of you who have served our nation in a military capacity, uh, who have been overseas or worked at home. Thank you so much for that sacrifice. I also want to thank those who are in the uh, community service, whether it is first aid or first responders, whether it is doctors or nurses or community health servants, mental health professionals, you make our community run, so I thank you. I also want to thank our current elected officials, and I believe we have two today, Councilwoman Teresa Griffin, where are you? Thank you, and Johanna Bishop, where are you? Thank you for serving Greenwood County in that role. We appreciate you fighting for us. And uh, we're going to try to clear some more seats to stand by your side uh, with your help. Any other elected officials that I missed? Okay, before we get to the program, I also want to make a call for anyone who is considering running for office or who has a declared intention to run. This is a good time just to come up and say hi. You don't have to give a campaign speech. You just have to be friendly. So first, I would like to introduce Brandon Best who has uh, checked in with me last month and said he is interested in running for South Carolina State Senate District Number 10. And there's no slide for this. It's okay. Uh, good, uh, good morning. How are everybody doing this morning? Uh, I'm Brandon Best. Um, I'm very happy and grateful to be here this morning. Um, it's um, just uh, overwhelming. And I'm just excited about the opportunities um, and what we all can do this, this election. And um, I just um, want to make an impact on our community. And it was just a great opportunity just to uh, just be here, just speak on stage. And I appreciate uh, Bill for just pointing to me, giving me great advice, uh, being a straight shooter, and telling me what I need, need to hear. Uh, and um, I don't want to keep it short and sweet, uh, but just thank y'all. Thank you, Brandon. Now, we also had some news of a political nature in the last month. You, uh, who knows who our current congressman is? Anybody want to speak his name? Okay. Anyhow, did you hear he has decided he is not going to run for office again? Congressman Jeff Duncan is, st is stepping down. And uh, he basically, yeah, that's worth an applause. He, he, as you know, his personal scandals would not withstand the scrutiny of an election. So he wisely stepped aside uh, and, and has, has opened the seat up, and there will be quite a few people filing. One person who is interested in running for Congress in Congressional District 3 is with us today. Could I have up to the stage, please, Brandon, or Brian Best? 
Good morning, everybody. How you doing this morning? Um, I'm, my name is Brian Best, and I'm running for the um, Congress. Of, uh, it was Jeff Duncan, but now the guy's named Stewart. I think I'm still doing research on my opponent because he's a new uh, new candidate running. Uh, I'm, thank everybody for being here this morning. I'm, let everybody know I'm grateful for the opportunity to be able to run and represent uh, Greenwood County. And um, I could, you got to forgive me. I just got over the flu, so I'm, I could barely talk because I'm barely breathe. But I thank you for this, for being here and supporting me and supporting everybody who's running. And uh, and uh, have a good morning. Have a good day. Oh, thank you. Sorry about that. That's fine. I always appreciate and admire those who decide to have the courage to stand up and say, we'll take a chance. Uh, I know what that's like, so I appreciate that bravery. Thank you. And if anybody else wants to consider, uh, as you know, we've got a lot of positions open. So let's move on to our agenda. Uh, I'm going to be with some opening comments and updates about what's happening in our party. Then we have a trio of amazing speakers, probably the best lineup we've ever had, and I'm super excited. Josiah Gary, who's with us today, he is a winner of several speaking contests, local boy from Greenwood. We have Quadro Campbell, who came to us from Greenwood, where, or from Greenville, and uh, he's actually been here before, so he's, he's not new to us, uh, but I've been, we've been chatting a bit and running into s each other at certain events, and I'm very interested to hear his story and what he does. And then there's Miss Tracy Font. Where are you, Tracy? Raise your hand. I know I saw you. There you are, back there. Welcome, Tracy, also from Greenville, an activist who's been working in our area on some important issues. Can't wait to hear about that as well. So I'm going to try to go through this very quickly because I'm not the exciting speaker today. So let me go through the updates. We have some literature updates on the table. Two things were updated. Our handouts for LGBTQ plus rights has been updated because there's been some laws that have passed the House. Um, if you are a listener to my podcast, we did a two-part series on transgender rights and talked about the hearings that were held. So the details are on that sheet. And the state Senate also recently updated uh, gun laws, where now there is no longer a requirement for training or permits for um, open carry and concealed, and concealed weapons. And so it's basically, it's a free-for-all out there. So South Carolina remains the sixth highest in the nation when it comes to mass shootings. That is a fact and we're gonna solve it by making guns even more accessible without training. Earlier last year, they celebrated it when the governor signed a law that required boaters to go through a safety program to save lives. Boaters! How many of you are in danger of being hit by a boat today? But gun violence, yeah, we're gonna make the guns more accessible. So take a look at that and grab some updated sheets if you are interested. All right, what's been happening in our party? Well, first and foremost, happy presidential primary day. Today's the day. We need a strong turnout. Show of hands, how many of you got a text last night saying vote in the Republican primary instead? Vote for Nikki? Was it just me? I see a few other names. It, it turned out there were over 200,000 texts sent out by a third party company or group, a nonprofit, uh, with some founders based here in, Green, in, um, in South Carolina. And they are supposedly out for democracy, but the way to save democracy is not to vote for a ex-governor who imposed some of the worst policies in our state that removed voting rights, restricted reproductive rights, and just was a terrible governor all the way around. The only way to save democracy is to vote for Democrats. That's where it comes down to. So I hope today, after this meeting, if you have not done so already, go to your poll location. The people are there waiting for you. In fact, many faces that are normally here are at the polls working today. So actually, I'm very thrilled that we have such a turnout that we do. This is wonderful. So go vote, get that little sticker, and, uh, and just show a strong turnout. Show that we have earned the right to be first in the nation. But we did our job here as the Greenwood County Democrats to do what we can to spread the word and get out the vote. Number one, we did phone banking. We had three training sessions and three phone bank parties. How many of you here were part of that phone banking effort. 
a lot. Thank you for that. We had over 25 volunteers who got trained and participated. It was wonderful. We had a goal, as I shared last month, of 1,400 phone calls that we had to make to Greenwood residents. Well, I, I hate to say it, goal accomplished. We did it. We were in the top three counties, top three out of 46 counties in the state that made our phone banking goals, and I couldn't be more proud of the efforts. Uh, and it was a lot of fun. We had a, a couple of fun stories. Rusty Wilson, I think I saw Rusty come in. He did some phone banking with us, and he called a number, and it was to the guy who was right next door in his office. Uh, Curvin Searles had, a, had an office in that same building, and he comes out. He's like, y'all just call me? They were like, yeah, we want to make sure you know about the primary. But that wasn't the best story. The best story was Reverend Sandra Harrison, who's sitting there pushing buttons on her computer to get to the next name, and guess whose name pops up? Hers. Her own name popped up, and she's like, what do I do? And I said, you better call. We got, we got to make our numbers. Fill out the form. So what are the chances? So thank you for that. As a party, we also sent out 1,500 postcards so this is part of what your donations to the party have allowed us to do. We were able to spend the money, get the postcards out to the Democratic-leaning voters in our county and let them know. We also did a video ad. How many of you saw this on your Facebook feed, by the way, of, of Edith Childs doing her little get-out-the-vote dance? All right, she, yeah, she was amazing. She uh, allowed us to record her. We had some fun, paid 50 bucks to get that pushed out, and I'm happy to say it had uh, almost 3,000 views as of last night. Uh, so it really helped get out the word and was shared and spread, and a very successful endeavor. I look forward to doing more of that. Another big thing that happened was the first in the nation dinner. Um, one week ago today, last Saturday, uh, in Columbia was a big event at the fairgrounds. President Joe Biden came to South Carolina. I was happy to have been there in person along with Dr. Jamil Brooks. Uh, we were able to be participants in this. I was that close. I took those pictures. It was great. Now, many of you got to see President Biden when he was running for office at Lander uh, in 2019, I believe, when he gave a speech. I couldn't make that. So this was the closest I've ever been to a sitting president, and I thought it was amazing. Now, I know just about everybody in Greenwood has a photo with Barack Obama or Kamala Harris or, or even the, the DJT guy. People got pictures. I don't know why, how you do it, but this is the closest I got, and I was excited. I wanted to play some clips, but we have too many speakers today, so I will share this observation with you. President Biden was on fire that night. He was on fire. Fire. I was so proud to be able to witness him speak in a passionate way. He was on point. He was repetitive on some key points. He had a rhythm. He had humor. He had anger. He had the mixture of everything I wanted to see out of my president for over 20 minutes without a single problem. No flubs like thinking Nikki Haley was at January 6th and in charge of security at the Capitol. None of that. He was fantastic and gave me just all the confidence I needed that he's my guy. He's my guy. So um, I was really happy to have been there, and it was an exciting, exciting day. So let's talk about the election and how things are going. Um, as an update, the campaign for Brooks and Kimler going full steam. We meet every week with our campaign team, and we're continuing to grow in our messaging and our materials. I want to announce that there will be a meet and greet with Dr. Jamil Brooks and myself at South Bend Winery on Friday, February 16th, starting at 5 p.m. Uh, there's a flyer there if you wish to grab it or share it. So we're going to try to get the word out. Uh, so please grab that flyer and spread the word, and we hope to see you at the winery. No charge, no tickets, just show up, meet and greet. Your price of admission, though, if I know you or Jamil knows you, your price of admission is bring somebody we don't know. We want somebody new to meet. I love all your faces, and I'd be happy to see them any day, but I need to see some new faces too. That's how we're going to get out the vote and get out the message. So we hope to see you at South Bend Winery in a couple of Fridays.
Also want to plug again, for those that don't know, Jamil and I host a podcast, and it is becoming more successful. We've had over 1,000 subscribers at this point and nearly 2,000 downloads. Not bad for a little old free startup here in Greenwood, South Carolina. We're getting listeners from all over the country at this point, and we talk about a lot of current hot topics. If you want to hear what we believe, if you want to be educated, and if you want to laugh a couple of times, because we're pretty, we're pretty funny people, uh, subscribe. Black, white, and blue in the South. All right, so let's wind up here. The We Want a Choice scoreboard. Um, looks like I didn't update my screen, so no offense. It's updated in the brochure, but I didn't update my slide. Uh, but we do have names for U.S. Congress SC3. We heard from him today. We got a name for SC Senate District 10, so I will get that updated. And, of course, 12 and 13 is Dr. Brooks and myself. But there are open spots everywhere else. If you are interested, we are here to help. In addition, uh, we're going to be filming today. Filming today. Now, this is not a huge film crew, so ignore all that fancy equipment. Uh, but we want to do another viral video ad throughout the month of February and into March that basically encourages people to sign up to run on the Democratic tickets because we want a choice. Nothing more dispiriting than walking into the ballot box and there's only one name to choose from, and that's the name of somebody you wouldn't sit at a table with. All right, we want a choice. Doesn't matter what kind of a long shot it is, we want a choice. So here's what I want to do today. After the breakfast meeting, if you are willing, I would like to get just five seconds with you, put on a little microphone clip, just like I did with Councilwoman Edith Childs, and have you say one line, I want a choice. I want a choice. That's all. And if I can get a montage of people saying it, at different angles and some sitting, some standing, some outside, we can put together a nice little video to encourage people to run for office and let them know that regular people can do it and people like you want it. So we want to encourage that. Anybody here willing? You don't have to raise your hand yet. But if you're willing, please stay just a couple minutes after our meeting and I'll grab a quick uh, video clip of you. We have some filing coming up right now, as a matter of fact, starting on February 20th. Uh, who knows these two school logos up here? Do they look familiar? What's one of them? Ware Shoals High School and 96. School board positions are open. And again, in your brochure, there's details on the inside about those dates and times and the number of seats. School board is important. If you want to block Moms for Liberty from getting into the school board, we need good people to run for those spots, okay? So they're open. If you need some help or instructions, let me know, and we are there to help. In fact, we have a committee to help. Our next search and support committee is going to be on Thursday, February 15th, at our headquarters uh, over at the Greenwood building. We had a meeting a couple weeks back. It was really good. Some of you here were there and we've got an action plan for some seats, and we want to continue that conversation, please join us. Uh, I'm going to ask you to reach out to me and let me know if you want to attend. The building gets locked down at 6 o'clock at night, so we need to let people in. So if you want to attend, let me know to expect you, and then we can have somebody to let you into the building. All right, last event I want to talk about, or the second to last, is the 1619 Project. It is February. Happy Black History Month. We have been for the past year here and there watching the Hulu series of the 1619 Project. We went homeless for a little while with the headquarters. Now that we have the headquarters again, I want to resume the viewing. We are up to episode number five. Now, the episodes don't require having seen the previous ones. Each one is standalone. If you wish to join us, Thursday, February 22nd from 6 to 7.30, we'll have some snacks and refreshments. It'll be at the Greenwood building at our headquarters. Please join us. We're just going to watch a film, have some snacks, and maybe chat about it afterwards. It's only about an hour or so long, uh, and then we'll talk. But again, please sign up online or text or call. Follow us on our mailing list, our email list. Follow us. Follow us on Facebook or your favorite social media platform. You will get more information in the upcoming week. Then the last event is our convention. Uh, we're not going to have a traditional breakfast meeting in March. It'll be our convention, which means it'll be more of a party. 
Uh, instead of breakfast, we're going to serve lunch like we have in years past. So it's going to be from 10 to 12. If you are an interested candidate, it's a great way to introduce yourself to all the people who are going to come on out. We'll be doing advertisements as well. We're also looking for precinct leaders. A precinct leader doesn't need to do anything except come to our executive committee meeting and you get to vote on stuff. Do we spend money on this? Do we invite that person? We have decisions to make. If you represent your precinct, you are invited, you get to vote. That's all it is. And we meet on the second Thursday of every month. So if you want to be a precinct leader, you have to come to the convention and be voted on. Now, listen, you raise your hand, it's a yes. Nobody's going to vote you down. And I'm not expecting any major competitions, but we have in Greenwood County 50 voting precincts, 50. I'm hoping to get at least 25 precinct leaders, all right? At least one per precinct. We can't have two, we can't have three, we need one to come to our meetings, be informed about what's going on, and then maybe take that information back with you or get involved in other ways. So if you want to be a precinct leader, there will be instructions. There will be a sign-up period two weeks ahead of time, so you'll need to fill out a little online form that says, I'm interested in being a precinct leader. We'll get together at our convention, we'll vote on those candidates, and then grow stronger. No other positions are up for election this year. So you are stuck with me as your chair, you're stuck with the first, second, and third vice chairs, you're stuck with the executive committee members. Or maybe I should say they're stuck still in their roles. They can't get out of it for another year. Next year we'll have uh, an open election, but this year it's just to get our precinct leaders in mind, as well as uh, delegates. If you want to be a delegate to the state party convention, we can sign up for that. If you want to be a delegate for the national convention, you have to attend the county convention. Those are the rules. More details on all of this in our email newsletter, which you can find in your email inbox. If you haven't signed up, look for the instructions on the back of your brochure. You can sign up for our email newsletter, or you can look at our uh, website that has copies of all those news newsletters out there. All right, one last piece of business before I turn it over to our dynamic speakers. We haven't done this in a while, and it's mostly my fault because, gosh, it's just been so busy, but volunteers are the lifeblood of the Democratic Party. Every person here is doing what they do, and they're not getting paid for it. Everybody. So thank you to all the volunteers, and we want to recognize our volunteer of the month. This person is here today. Happy to see it. Lane, thank you for getting prepared for the photos. This will be good, too. Uh, this volunteer has participated and helped in a lot of the outreach programs that we've been doing. Volunteering to help with the uh, Easter egg thing and helping to volunteer with some other things. And, and then lately this person has also volunteered for a couple of campaigns. Uh, but this person specifically saved my butt. Martin Luther King Jr. Day was a couple weeks ago and we wanted to do voter registration here in this building and capture some new voters, which we did, but I went to our headquarters and we ran out of voter registration forms. I was like, crap! So I called this person, so now she knows who she is. Tori Miller saved our butts. She ran home, printed off some volunteer, or some uh, voter registration forms, and then rushed back and allowed us. So come on up, Tori. I want to give you a gift. She came dressed in uniform. Come on up to stage, and we're going to stand right here in this gap. So first off, this is an award of recognition presented to Tori Miller in appreciation of your volunteerism and generosity in support of the efforts of the Greenwood County Democratic Party given this third day of February 2024. And as a small gift, I picked up a souvenir for you, a coffee mug that says first in the nation in celebration of our first in the nation primary. This was in the same room as President Biden. 
So it's got magical powers. It says, but first in the nation and then coffee. So you've got your instructions. Thank you, Tori. I drink coffee. <laughs>